Hello everybody and welcome back to another video. Now this video is going to be kind of an intermediary episode between two videos, one that's already out on the channel and one that I'm currently working on and that is web browsing on the Nintendo Wii. You can check out that video up here. There is a part two on this coming but before we can get to that I wanted to document my experience of trying to capture composite video on Windows 10. So basically what the deal is here I just remembered when I finished recording the first episode to this video that I have this composite capture device that I got at a thrift store recently. Now I was using a DVD player, believe it or not, to record the video output from the Nintendo Wii and this is just going to be an easier method because I'm not going to have to use that big old DVD player and have DVDs and have the possibility of one of them getting corrupted like what happened at the end of the last video. So we've got the Wii's RCA cable right here and obviously yellow is composite video so in theory we should be able to plug this into this plug this into my computer and capture away I don't see how anything could go wrong no seriously I am expecting a couple of problems to arise mainly because this device is pretty old it was released in the early to mid 2000s I believe and the driver included on this CD is for Windows XP which obviously is not going to work so great with Windows 10 but we're going to try it anyway and see if we can maybe get this to work. So there are two CDs that it came with. Uh, this is a Pinnacle device so it comes with Pinnacle Studio Quick Start in this case. This has the uh, drivers on it and then you've also got this right here which is like a supplemental disc that has some bonus content. Ooh, so we'll, we'll see what that is. Yeah so we're going to be trying to install this on my Windows 10 machine or at least install the drivers and be able to capture footage with this. It'd be great if we could do it with OBS, but if that doesn't happen, which there's a high probability that it won't, we can use the software included on this disk right here. And if all of this doesn't work on Windows 10, which is an even higher probability because this driver and device is so old, I'm just going to resort to installing a virtual machine with Windows XP or whatever the latest version of Windows is that officially supports this thing and we will just have the VM utilize this USB device and we will hopefully be able to capture footage from it without any issues. So let's just get started with it guys. Hopefully you enjoy this episode for what it is. I'm expecting all sorts of stuff to go wrong because that's just what happens in these videos. But let's get started and see just what we get ourselves into. Well, believe it or not, Pinnacle Studio was able to install on my computer, my Windows 10 machine without any issues, despite this being a pretty old version. Though I did have to enable compatibility mode for the setup program which isn't really that surprising, but it was a very straightforward install and afterwards I just had to restart my computer. Okay, so first thing I noticed is it added these three programs to my startup folder. So QTTask.exe from Apple Computer, you can tell that's old because they were still called Apple Computer, used to launch a list of OEM installation programs. That's a great name right there from Pinnacle Systems. And then PSDRV check. We can't open file location for this. Let's see where this is at. Okay, so this is just in uh, the Pinnacle Studio 9 folder. And then I'm, I assume this will be in the same folder. Oh, it installed a version of QuickTime that's, a, I guess, a super old, like how, oh my gosh, 2004? Does this thing still run on Windows 10? Oh my gosh, this still runs on Windows 10 without any compatibility filters applied? Oh my gosh. This is QuickTime version 6.5.1 for Windows. <laughs> that's still, can you actually play stuff with it? Okay, so let's drag this video in here. Couldn't complete the last action because an unknown error occurred. The number of the error is 11004. <laughs> Open movie in new player. Okay, let's see this sample movie. Oh no. Wow, check that out. Quick time. Let's see if we can open it this way. So open movie in new player and we'll just select one of my videos. So we'll go here and then we'll select Wii Brow service. Convert. Could not open because an unknown... Oh, this is a different error. Negative 8971. I assume it's probably because... I mean, this is an MP4 file, but it's just probably not compatible with this version of QuickTime. Okay. Well, that's interesting that the program works and we could play that sample video. I was not really expecting... Uh, that to work. I mean, it makes sense. You know, this is a QuickTime reliant program, so it has to install this old version of QuickTime, but I just found it interesting that the program itself still runs on Windows 10. So, okay. 
let's try to this right here oh we got a shortcut for quick time on the desktop too this right here is uh, pinnacle studio version 9 and okay so we're just going to launch so this is quick start this is not the entire program so this in theory should allow us to just oh we got some sample footage here and it's advertising pinnacle studios is this the newest version it's still displaying like the most recent version of pinnacle studio because the i mean according to this site here this is the website studio 24 is the newest version so that's actually pretty neat because that image is not embedded you know in the application like it's not just an image that's stored locally it's actually pulling that from somewhere that's how it's able to show you what the newest version of the program is so let's go to capture here i've got the device plugged in so obs virtual camera is obviously an obs related thing dv camcorder i wonder if that's it i'm gonna have to plug the wii into that and see if if this is the video capture device. And yeah, Studio 9 Quick Start is trying to initialize a DV or Digital 8 camcorder via a 1394 port, which is Firewire. So this is not even the right device at all. Oh, it's not even configured, that's why. Drivers for this device are not installed. I thought you said you installed them. It said it was set up and ready to use when I plugged it in. Okay, we'll try. I guarantee, yeah, of course it's not gonna find anything. Okay, let's try to just specify the CD here, driver, right here. Okay, so we'll click OK. E driver, next. Windows was, <laughs> oh, it's an exec, <laughs> it's an executable file, that's why. Gosh, well, did this not install then? Error unknown OS was not found in the string table. String ERR unknown OS, so it tries to, error unknown OS, Windows percent %S installation. Okay, we may be able to fix that with a compatibility layer, so let's just, Run this programming compatibility mode for XP Service Pack 2. There we go, okay. Welcome to the Install Shield Wizard for Pinnacle Device Drivers. Let me just close out of Pinnacle Studio here. I accept there, like, did it not install this? I thought it was gonna install this through that main setup. Okay, we'll try to restart again and see if running this solves the problem. Oh, isn't that exciting? It still shows the device as having no driver installed. Let's see what the problem is this time. Yeah, once again, the drivers for this device are not installed. Okay, so I just plugged the device into a USB 2 port just to see if that could have something to do with it. But you see, this is what it said. Device is ready, DVC90 is set up and ready to go. No, it's not. You didn't install a driver. I'm sure that probably just means that it was able to recognize that the device is plugged in to your system, not necessarily having to do with a driver. Though it is kind of annoying because if somebody sees that, they go, oh, it's all set up and ready to go. Like, it's just plug and play. Well, no, it's not because you need to have a driver. Okay, well, here is Pinnacle's website. And they've got a list of products here and they have drivers for, well, let's just search for the Dazzle on here. Okay, so this is the Dazzle DVC90 and you can see that, what does orange mean? Oh, maybe it's just all the orange ones are Dazzle, as you can see. So you've got a Windows XP driver, that's this here, but you also have a Windows Vista slash Windows 7 32-bit driver which let's go ahead and just try that one. There's obviously no guarantee that this will work, but it's worth a try. So let's close out. We'll, we'll just leave the device manager open actually. Just run the program here. Okay, choose setup language, English. Extracting USB2 device drivers.msi. We get a completely different error message this time. Oh, install shield wizard complete. The wizard was interrupted before Pinnacle Systems USB2 device drivers could be completely installed. Okay, did it extract? It didn't extract anything, to the desktop at least. Show the Windows installer log. Oh, let's try that, finish. Directory manager not initialized. Well, there is that other disk, though I'm not really sure. This says bonus content DVD. This is probably not gonna be anything relating to drivers, but we'll put it in and see. So, oh, we've got drivers here too, interesting. Okay, so these are a bunch of driver I mean, these are not the driver files themselves. These are all executables. That's interesting because it said bonus content. Like this doesn't look, this honestly has the same, if not the same, a very similar file structure to the other disc. But let's try to run welcome.exe here. Studio 9 content DVD. Okay. OS version not set. Okay, we're gonna get that same error. And then we immediately go to the license agreement. Well, let me just get out of this and launch this in compatibility mode. So we'll do XP Service Pack 2. And you see we don't get that error this time. Yes. Pinnacle Studio 9. 
And yeah, these just seem to be, what are system add-ons? Adobe Acrobat Reader, real one player, oh gosh. <laughs> Anyone remember real player? Let's just install this for the heck of it and see if it even runs here in Windows 10. And then we have QuickTime 6.5. What version was this again? 6.5.1. This is either that same version or it's an older version. It could be 6.5.1, but let's just see if we can install real player. But okay, we'll hit next. Honestly, I think we're gonna have to resort to using a virtual machine. I didn't really want to do that, but if I have to, I will. It's not that big of a deal. I really wanted to see if we could just get this working natively in Windows 10 though, but this is a pretty old capture device and obviously drivers are literally what we need to get this working. And when you don't have those for the operating system you're using, you're gonna run into problems as we are here. Okay, so it finished installing, well, sort of. The disk has stopped spinning, so that's a good thing, but we're stuck on the very, like, last percent here. It says installing, the bar's all the way across, but it's not done yet, and it's been sitting on this screen for about, I'd say, five to seven minutes, maybe? So, we're gonna let it sit here a little more, and if not, we're just gonna- Oh my gosh, free AOL and unlimited internet? No way! It is <laughs> Okay, hang on a second. It got real player. Free offers from real.com. Okay, I want to see if real one player works. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, it actually works? This is the CD, I think. Or no, this is not the CD. What? This is so interesting because this is like a Windows 10 file browser right here. It's like embedded in here. In fact, yeah, if we right click and go to properties, it just brings up this is data cache properties. Oh, it's trying to load. This is supposed to be a setup screen. That's what this is supposed to be. This is supposed to be a setup screen, but it just loaded Windows Explorer. That's really interesting. Cause see, if you click cancel, it says to use real one player, you must complete setup. Oh, and speaking of setup, the install shield wizard for the Pinnacle Studio content CD just completed. So, okay, we'll hit finish. Though I don't think that's gonna really do anything for us cause obviously there were no drivers in there. Well, there were which I still found weird that even though this is like the bonus disc, it has drivers in it. And these are all older than the Windows 7 and Windows Vista driver that we try to install. So I don't really think these are gonna work anyway. So I think we are just gonna try to do this in a virtual machine, which like I said, won't be that big of a deal, but I just really wanted to get it working on Windows 10. But I do wanna check out Real Player. So we'll go through the quote unquote setup here. I don't know what that was supposed to be displaying. I assume like a welcome screen, but it's just weird how it defaulted. I mean, it had something to do with Windows Explorer, obviously, because it's trying to, I mean, it, it just defaulted to Windows Explorer, like an actual file browser just embedded within the program. So we're gonna accept the end user license agreement. We are on uh, an office local area network because we've got 10 megabits per second or above. So we'll hit next. We do, I definitely do not want to make real one player the default player for all of these. Though I wonder if it would do it. Do you think, let's just say MP3 and we'll see if it, now obviously it's not going to be able to change the default program because you have to do that from the Windows settings program now, but I wonder if it'll open that up and have the option to change it. We're not going to check your system to maintain these preferences, no thanks, finish. And it just, it just opens up the file browser again. Well, it certainly did not make it the default player because I've got some MP3 files here. Though can we, yeah, if I try to drag in, it just says copy to data cache. I mean, this is not supposed to be what it's showing. <laughs> Oh, okay. You're now in control of the most powerful media player in the world. The most powerful media player in the world, everybody. It says it right here. That makes it official. No other player is ever going to take that title from a real one player. Now, I don't know if you saw it because it happened very quickly, but on this center screen here on the bottom, when it was playing that animation video and audio, it loaded an HTML document and now it went back to the file browser. So my guess is on the setup screen where it was displaying Windows Explorer, my guess is it was supposed to be displaying an HTML document, but for whatever reason just didn't. That actually makes a lot of sense now. This right here is version 2.0 from 2002. At least that's the, the latest copyright date there. So let's try to get a song going. That's all we need to hear, my friends. We've got a great royalty-free track playing. Real one player can do it, absolutely. And we have the same thing going on here. Look at the bottom, it says web. So we're supposed to be on a web page right now, but we're just in Windows Explorer. So we could go to like my YouTube music directory and try to play a song. 
But yeah, it's just going to open up in my default music player because it's just acting as if this is a regular Windows Explorer window. So it's supposed to be loading a web page or an HTML based interface, but it just defaults to this data cache folder. Real player does not show up in here and it doesn't even allow us to add. I mean, we can look for an app in the Microsoft Store, but real player does not show up here. So we can't even change it to be the default app, at least from that screen. So you can technically use this on Windows 10, but you're gonna have to just file open and select a file you want to listen to or just drag it in or just manually set it as your default music player which you can do but i'm just not really going to touch on that right now because well this isn't really the purpose of this video but i just found it interesting that it installs real player and it still works on windows 10. but all right that's enough of all this let's get back to trying to capture composite video through this device using a virtual machine all right so we've got a windows 7 virtual machine set up i've plugged in the usb device to my computer and we're going to tell vmware to connect it to the virtual machine and well never mind i was too late on that let me try it again yeah this message has a timeout and then if you just don't do anything with it in the specified amount of time it'll just automatically connect it to the host so connect to vm now i did this off camera and i was hoping it would show the message again but it came up and said that windows could not install the driver software so that means that you know there's no driver installed obviously but we've got the windows 7 driver right here so we're going to just run this and hopefully we won't run into any issues this time like we did on my host computer. Oh, uh, is this because IDS DIFX x86? I think we're going to have to install Windows 7 32 bit. Oh boy, that'll be fun. So let me go and do that really quick and I'll be right back with you guys. Okay, so we're back on a 32 bit Windows 7 installation. We've got the device plugged in. Let's try to run the setup executable again and see if something good happens. So there we go. All we had to do was use a 32-bit release of Windows, which makes sense because the driver's written for a 32-bit release of Windows. So this wouldn't work on my host computer, even if the driver was compatible with Windows 10 because installation I have is 64-bit. But there we go. So we get the installing device driver software message. There we go. DVC90 device driver software installed successfully. Isn't that wonderful. So I've got the disk in my computer's drive. At least it should show up here. There we go. So we're going to run welcome.exe and it's going to complain about admin permissions. So let us run it as an administrator. So the way I'm going to capture the footage from this is I'm not going to just record it using Pinnacle Studio and then save the file to the virtual machine. I'm actually going to have a preview of the Wii's output display. I'm going to see if we can do that like in full screen. And then I'm going to use OBS on my host computer to record the virtual machine's window. All right, so we've restarted. Let's launch Pinnacle Studio 9 here. And we're just going to launch Studio Quick Start, go to Capture. Okay, it's testing Drive C to determine the maximum data rate. So we got AVI Capture right here. We can go to Settings. Let's go to Capture Source. Okay, it's got it in here. There we go. All right. We're going to select 16 by 9 because I've got the Wii set up in widescreen. And Capture Format, all this isn't going to matter because, again, I'm not going to actually uh, capture it directly from this program. So start capture i guess oh can you not do a preview i just want to see the output of the device currently without capturing is that possible at all well the program just closed on us that's <laughs> that's great okay launch studio quick start so there is an option for capture preview it just doesn't show up i wonder if it's supposed to be showing here but the program just kind of glitching out well i started capturing we'll stop capturing I mean, where is it? Where is it saving this to? It's saving it to like my videos or something? We got some. Th these are not videos that I put in here. These are sample videos. Oh, here we go. Pinnacle Studio, my projects. Nope. Auxiliary files, temporary files. Where is it saving it to? Okay, so back in the program, the default output directory is public videos. Users public videos. It's not here either. <laughs> I mean, look. Okay, we'll save it as we. Okay, start capture, and this is going to save to public videos. Okay, start capture, and we'll let it capture for... Well, see, this is what's interesting. 
You see that this counts up to seven. Last time I counted up to eight, it just stops. It just completely stops. It still says it's capturing though. The program is not frozen. I can move it around. I can, I mean, well, I can't go to edit or anything. That makes sense. And you go here, there's not even a video file being created in here. Well, everyone, I'm pleased to say that Windows XP has saved the day. Yeah, ever thought you'd hear that in 2021? But no, I was able to get this program installed in a Windows XP virtual machine, 32-bit, obviously and you can see that we are capturing the output from the Wii. Well, we're not capturing, but we can see it here. Now, the only major problem is I can't enlarge this preview window. I've tried basically everything in here. I've tried to enlarge the preview window, and there's no way to do it. So we can work with that because what I can do is just capture it to the virtual machine and then get a AV splitter to split the signal to go to my TV so that I can see what I'm doing so I don't have to like stare at this tiny little image here. Now I tried using all sorts of software. You can see this desktop is kind of a mess here. I tried using OBS in Windows 7. It recognized the device, but it didn't work. I also tried this program called ArcSoft Showbiz, which came with another AV capture device that I have. Uh, it's called the Tote MC USB 2 something or other. It's one of those easy cap things. I'm sure you guys know what those are, those super cheap capture devices. Yeah, I tried that like a year ago to work with Windows 10, and I think even a virtual machine. Couldn't get that to work. Maybe I didn't try a virtual machine but this also will capture like if I go to capture here I can pull the dazzles output here so this is it but the problem here is you can see it's very laggy and we also get some audio glitches going on as you can hear there which is not very pleasant to listen to but of course this is only the preview window this is not the video that this is capturing and like saving to a file so we can do that we can capture it here and we'll let it capture for a couple seconds here and we'll stop so it's saved to videos now we'll go in here to documents videos and this is the problem that i've been encountering i try to go to videos to launch this and you get this data execution prevention to help protect your computer windows is closed a component of Windows. Does that make any sense? To help protect Windows, it's closed a crucial component of Windows. So obviously something's going on here, but we can still launch it here. So this is the, actually this is not, it's just a blank file. I mean, it's just a black screen. Is this the one here? No, this isn't it either. So like, I don't know what the, let me just try to capture, let's copy one of these over to my host computer here. Oh, never mind. Here it is working on my host computer. So I guess Windows Media Player was glitching out there. It could have something to do with that error message that we got from Windows Explorer. But this is the output, this uh, saved to an MPG file. And right here is an AVI file, which is larger in size. This is about 35 megabytes. That other file was three megabytes, three and a half megabytes. And this is from the included program. Now, both of these look, I mean, I want to say that the MPEG file or the MPG, it looks, I mean, you, we don't get that jitteriness on the top here. You can see we get that on the top and bottom saving with the other program. And here's the other one once again. But the problem is both of these, and I'm going to throw it up in editing right now, both of these seem to be lower quality than saving it to a DVD, which looks like this. And I obviously want the best quality when I'm recording output from the Wii, right? Like I want the quality to be the best that it can be. And I've tried to go in here, like we'll go back to the included program because that produced a better, I mean, out of the two, the uh, whichever, God, I've been through so many programs, I can't even remember the name, not ArcSoft, uh, Pinnacle Studio version nine. Now, obviously you, I know you can change the settings, but I go here and you can go to capture source. We want this at, you know, NTSC. We can change it to, actually we can change it to 16 by nine. Um, because the Wii is set to 16 by 9 so there you go and we can go to settings we can go to I think it's capture format well with AVI you can set it to custom but you can't change the slider with MPEG you can go to custom and change the data rate to be you know 8200 kilobits per second which is the highest available quality the problem is you click OK and you get this. You can activate MPEG-2 encoding slash decoding for Studio 9 Quick Start by purchasing an activation key. I have an activation key. I mean, that's literally what I typed in. You have to type it in to install the program. So we can click activate now, 
The problem is, because this program is so old, it doesn't even have... Navigation was cancelled, and we are online, that's what we get. So we can't record to an MPEG-2. We can record to AVI at full DV quality, and we can go to here and change, you know, some of the settings. You know, you can change the brightness, the contrast, sharpness. Oh, let's turn the sharpness up. Is that going to do something? And no, that doesn't, uh, that doesn't change anything. Gosh, this is really frustrating. Like, I just literally spent this entire day working on this, or at least most of, of this day working on this. And I'm not even going to be able to use this. I'm, I'm literally just going to go back to the DVD player. Say what you want. It is a very convoluted method, but it does produce the best quality, at least compared to this AV capture device. So I am going to be looking online for a capture device that works with Windows 10 natively. I'm sure they exist, though I think probably the best route to go would be to get an Elgato HD60 and use an AV to HDMI converter, which I, I have one of those. I bought it from a flea market type place and you had someone there who just bought pallets filled with Amazon returns, you know, there's people that do that and then they try to resell the stuff well it was one of these right here and this one is actually it's it's four and a half out of five stars out of 2077 ratings on amazon so that's that seems pretty promising i have one of those though i don't know why it was returned to amazon it could have not worked uh which wouldn't be very great but i think i paid like 50 cents for it or something or like two bucks something super it's, it's super cheap i mean the thing's 13 bucks on amazon so i could just buy another one or buy a completely different one so that's where we're at right now uh like i said for the meantime i'm going back to the DVD player method even though it might be convoluted it works most of the time just have to hope that uh, the DVD player doesn't just decide to corrupt the disc again which literally was the first time I've had that happen I've used that player for years and have had no issues but it was that incident that made me realize oh I have this capture device let me try to use it well it doesn't seem to produce the best video quality it could be because the device itself is screwed up in some way though I don't really think that's the case I think it just doesn't really capture at the greatest quality even with changing those settings within the Pinnacle Studio program. But hopefully you guys enjoyed this episode. This one was, I mean, I've got a lot of footage to go through. We'll see how long that the video ends up being. But if you enjoyed this one, be sure to give it a thumbs up. Be sure to get subscribed down below and turn on those channel notifications if you haven't already to get notified whenever I upload a new video, which I do multiple times every single week on this channel. And as always, I want to thank you all so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.